Have you ever wondered what living your true, authentic life would be like? And doing so fearlessly, undeniably, and unapologetically. Is such a way of life even possible? My answer is yes, it is. Welcome to my podcast, From Fearful to Fierce. My name is Sarah Udogras Fatna, and I will be using this space to share simple, easy to implement tips on how to become the best version of yourself by living authentically, unapologetically, undeniably, and fearlessly. From Fearful to Fierce is based on my FFTF trilogy, which is available on Amazon, by the way. A series on the importance of knowing, accepting, and loving one's self. So whether you are struggling with imposter syndrome, self-doubt, or just looking to level up your confidence again, this podcast has got you covered. So get ready to take on the world one fearless step at a time as this podcast unravels and tackles some of the issues that prevents us from becoming the best version of ourselves. Once again, I'm your host, Sarah Odogros Fatna. The episode of this uh, podcast is a very uh, uh, touching one because of uh, a phone call that I just uh, received from a friend a couple of minutes ago. And uh, they said, this friend of mine, she's a professional opera singer. So she actually came to Austria to train. And um, she came She came visiting me today and left, uh, I think, like uh, 10 minutes or 15, 10 minutes ago, only for me to get a call from her. Apparently, she had gotten onto the bus. And then just out of nowhere, this uh, she said a guy on the bus started to harass her. This friend of mine is a very quiet person. She doesn't really like uh, trouble. She said when he started to harass her, she just moved quietly away, only for him to come nearer to her and shoved and pointed his finger in her face. Of course, it was a racist uh, attack. So she called me really, really in panic. And I asked her, what about the driver? And she said, well, the driver saw what was happening and didn't say anything. The only thing he said to her was, Ruik, Ruik, which is uh, quiet, be, be calm, be calm. My friend, I said, what does he mean? become. So she says she had no idea. And then I said, but what about other people in the bus? Is no one speaking up? She said, everyone's just turning away and pretending as if they're not uh, aware of what is happening. The topic of uh, this episode is, uh, what do you stand for? I'm sure if uh, one were to go into that bus and ask a few people, if there could be people I'm very much sure that a whole bunch of people in there will say, yes, they are good people. But then what exactly does it mean to be a good person? When you can see a situation like the one my friend just described, and then you don't do anything about it. Of course, we all say we are human beings because, oh, we talk, we can communicate, we can make choices, uh, we are able to reason. Don't ask me what reasoning means. Of course, in any society, there are always going to be the good, the bad, and the ugly of that society. And what that means is that you're going to have good people, you're going to have kind people, you're going to have people with conscience, and you're going to have those without conscience. You're going to have people with empathy, and you're going to have those without empathy. My point here is not on the, on the person who harassed my friend. My discussion is on the people who witnessed this harassment and did nothing about it. So I just want to ask, what actions do we take on a day-to-day basis to indicate that we are actually human beings? Because this is a buzz that probably sat more than 20 people. At least amongst those uh, 20 people, there was not a single person who was humane enough to stand up against the person who was harassing her. Even the driver, I'm sure if my friend, (laughs) of course my friend is black, she's a black woman. If she had been the one to just harass someone there, everyone in there would have been against her. 
I have been in a situation where a man and a, and a woman, a husband and a, a wife, harassed me in, in, in a restaurant. And some other white women came in and had absolutely no idea what was going on, did not even want to know what was going on. And she just came and pointed her hand in my face and said, oh, you should not respond to her like that without actually finding out what prompted me to respond to the people the way that I did. And it was actually one of the sales ladies there who turned to her and said, and she has every right to respond the way she she's doing because she is in the right and the, those people are harassing her. And at that point, even in her shamefacedness, she didn't have the courtesy or decency to, to apologize to me. She simply turned and walked away because she was harassed. I mean, sorry, rather, she was embarrassed. She was not distant enough to still apologize, you know, for barging in and saying something inappropriate to me when she did not have the full, full picture. I am saying here that if my friend had been in the one in the wrong, I'm sure the whole boss would have stood up. Even the driver would have come out and they probably would have pushed her out and said she was disturbing the peace of, of the bus or, or the peace of other people. But there she was because she's black and she had to suffer that indignity without a single person standing up to say that was wrong. And yet, if you were to ask those people, they would say they are good people. So what exactly does it mean to be a good person? Here, there was a situation that was obviously terrible and no one, not a single one was sympathetic enough to stand up to say what was happening to my friend was wrong. So again, I'm asking, what does it mean to be human? What do you stand for? Especially when you see situations that are obviously very much wrong. I too have experienced something similar to what my friend did. In fact, a few times, as a matter of fact, I experienced it when I was with my two young kids. My kids were very small at the time. They were less than, than seven. And I remember walking into this uh, train. There were two guys drinking, being very stupidly jolly. And as soon as I stepped in with my kids, two of them say, ah, the nigger and our two little niggers. And this was in a train full of people. And then they started to harass me. And not a single person did anything or said anything. Rather, they all looked down and pretended as if they, they, like they did not exist in, on that train. Sometimes when I share these uh, terrible racist experiences with some people, or some have said to me, oh, are you sure? I'm sure it was not ra racism. You know, some people are just uh, bad people. Are you sure you're not being overly sensitive? In, in those moments I've gone, oh yeah. So, how come on a bus full of people, other people, with their own young children, how come these guys did not walk up to them to harass them? Why me? What was special about me and my two young children? How come they did not walk up to other people with their kids and insulted them and, and, and disdained them? and despise them and dishonor them with their, with their words. I mean, like I said, any idiot can say just about anything. But what, what bothers me greatly is that in, on a train full of supposedly responsible, intelligent, educated uh, people, things like this will go on. Not a single person will, will, will speak against it. And then if they step out of that train, and they walk just a few meters and someone were to ask them, oh, what kind of person are you? They would say they are good people. Very open-minded and very tolerant. I hear this all the time in Austria. I have friends who are non-Austrians. I have Asian Africans. And sometimes I have to ask, would you stand up for any of those people if you didn't know them? And you were on a bus like my friend was or like I was with my children. And someone did that thing to them. Would you stand up to would you speak for that person? Because that's the true mark of tolerance. A true mark of tolerance is when you can speak against an injustice, even if you are the lone voice in the room, in a room full of people.
who are quiet. That's a true mark of tolerance and civilization that you recognize that everyone deserves to be treated with dignity and respect. That is a true, true mark of civilization, tolerance. Because until you can stand up against injustice, even when it's not directed at you, especially if it's not directed at you, until you can do that, you cannot truly really call yourself human, nor can you call yourself tolerant, nor can you call yourself civilized. Because it takes more than it takes more than just having a few friends who are not of your race to, to be described as being tolerant. It takes more than just being able to travel to other countries and maybe experience eating their food and drinking their drinks and dancing their dance to be considered tolerant or civilized. Civilization is about empathy. It's about standing up, about recognizing that other people deserve to be treated with the same dignity and respect that you expect for yourself. That's what civilization means. That's what tolerance means. Thank you for tuning in. Once again, this is From Fearful to Fears by Sarah Udo Grossfordner. Until next time, keep striving to become the best version of yourself. Live intentionally, be unapologetic, be bold, be fearless. Before I forget, don't forget to subscribe to my podcast, like the different episodes, and press the notification button so that when I bring out uh, new episodes, you'll be notified. Thank you very much. Until next time.